Hi all, this is Mr. Yeager from Virtual Physics. Uh, today's topic is on what are called Atwood machines. Atwood machines. All right. Which you'll probably see these or think of these look like more like just simply pulleys. Okay? Pulleys, but in physics we call them Atwood machines. Okay? And we're going to be looking at a couple different types. We have two types of Atwood machines. We have ones that are simply called regular Atwood machines. And this would be where you have two blocks on opposite sides of a rotating disc, obviously connected by ropes. We have what we'd call M1 and M2. Okay? So that would be a regular Atwood machine we're going to look at. And then we have what's called the modified Atwood machine. The modified. And this is where one of the blocks is now on a table. All right, so we can either have two blocks, but we're also going to talk about ones where there are three blocks, two hanging on either side and one on the table. All right, and so when we're looking at these, these are the probably the you could say most complicated force problems, but we're going we're going to find that there's a good routine to solve all of these particular problems. Problems, a good process. So let's jump right into it. So let's say we have a regular Atwood machine. All right. Let's say we have this regular Atwood machine, and we're going to say M1 and M2. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and say M1 is greater than M2. All right. I'm not going to give any numbers. We like to do these without numbers so that when the numbers show up, we can plug them in really easily. All right. So we already know that the system, oh, I'm using a word that we don't know yet, the Atwood machine is going to move in the direction of greater force. This Atwood machine is going to move up on this side and then down on the other side. All right. So the direction of motion is always toward the greater mass for a regular Atwood. larger mass. Right. It's, always, it's always toward the larger mass. All right. And one of the big things we're going to say here, and this is very, very important, is we're going to call the direction of motion is always going to be positive. We're going to say anything pointing in the direction of motion is positive. Anything pointing, so I'm going to add the word point in here. If any forces are pointing in the direction of motion, it's going to be considered positive. Any forces pointing opposite the direction of motion, opposite, we are going to label it negative, okay, a negative force, all right? Because the idea is, if it's positive, it's trying to make it go faster, okay? Obviously, forces would try to be pulling this one down, okay? Make it go faster. Anything pointing the opposite direction is clearly trying to make it slow down, okay? And so, knowing that, let's go ahead and kind of keep on looking at this problem. I'm going to draw it down on a new page. All right, All right so M2 greater than M1. Wait a minute, that's not what I said. I had M1 on this side. M1, M2. Sorry about that. M1 greater than M2. Okay? So, first thing, this is a force problem. I mean, what they're going to ask you is basically two questions. We're interested in what is the acceleration of the blocks and what's the tension acting on the blocks. Those are usually your two primary questions we're going to get when we have an Atwood machine. Okay? Well, let's look at this. There's a couple things we can notice. First off, these objects are connected, so they're going to move together. And so anytime we have connected masses, connected objects, all right, they will have the same acceleration. All right. So we only need to find one acceleration. If I find the acceleration on M1, then I know the acceleration on M2. There's no way for this side to be moving faster than the opposite side. They have to be moving together. So they're going to have the same acceleration. And so that's usually the first thing we're going to try to solve for before we find the tension. The tension, we're basically going to use our old elevator 
problem method. They can, it's going to be similar to an elevator problem because the objects are accelerating up and down is what we're looking at here. And so, what do we do from here? Well, we can draw free body diagrams for both objects. We can draw that this object, M1, is going to feel be pulled down by its weight. I'm going to call that W1. And there's a tension up. Okay, I'm going to call that T1. On the other side, M2 actually is trying to pull with its weight down the opposite direction. And T2 is what's going to pull it upwards. Okay? And so we already pointed out that the object on the right-hand side is going to be moving up while the object on the left-hand side is moving down. This is where it gets a little confusing with what I said with the direction of motion. That means on the right-hand side, up is positive, while on the left-hand side, down is positive. All right, so we got to be very careful here. All right, and I mean, it makes sense. We got to believe that, hey, weight M1's weight is what's pulling this down, while M2 wants it to actually, the weight wants it to go the opposite direction. So it's trying to resist that motion upwards. Okay? And so that's why weight 1 is going to be considered positive, while weight 2 will be considered negative. If I look at the tensions, T1 will be negative, T2 will be positive. Okay? So there's actually a couple ways to look at this problem. I don't want to, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible and as quick as possible. Okay? We can look at this and go, okay, let's figure out all the different things that are moving this object. And that would be the weight and the tensions. Well, the thing is here, guys, what do we remember about tension in a rope? This is all one rope. It's wrapped around this pulley, but this is all the same rope. And so one other thing to notice is, or to remember, that tension in a rope is the same everywhere. Tension in the rope is the same everywhere. So if I want to write out a net force equation, if I write out what is the net force that this is acting on, what is the net force of this particular object, let's look at the forces. It would be weight 1 is trying to accelerate it, minus T1 plus T2 minus W2. And so what we got here is we see, wait a minute, tension is the same everywhere. So what can you say about T1 and T2? They are equal. So if these two are, are equal to each other, we can cancel them out. So what is act, what are the forces actually making this object move? It's only the weights, weight 1 and weight 2. Now, there's actually a faster way to figure that out. This is one way you can definitely look at it. All right? But what we're going to do is we're going to use something called a system approach. And if we can get this, all the rest of the Atwood machines are not that difficult. We're going to use a system approach. And what we mean that by that is, let me draw this out again, M1, M2, is instead of looking at this as two separate objects, a system approach is where we combine all objects together. Instead of looking at this as two masses being pulled over the pulley, I'm going to use, basically, I'm looking at this as one single mass. And so what we do is basically this. I'm going to rewrite the net force equation. The net force for a system will equal the sum of all masses, sigma means sum, times the acceleration, so it's still m times a, which we know is net force, will equal the sum of the forces acting on the system. And one difficult part for us to understand is we then ignore what are called all internal forces. We ignore all internal forces. And what are the internal forces? Well, if I'm combining these objects, what I'm doing is I'm combining all of this into what well, technically a single mass, that is M1 plus M2. And so all the ropes, the pulley, the whole thing becomes a single mass, and I'm only looking at the outside forces. So that means the internal forces on an Atwood machine
is always the tension, which means I can ignore the tension. All right? Now, I proved that back here. It's always going to cancel out, so it's never going to have an effect on the whole acceleration of the system. But the reason why is because if I use the system approach, all those ropes become inside the system, and an object can't exert a force on itself. So then what are the forces acting on the system? Well, we talked about it. We have the weight of one pulling down, and this is definitely a little weird. Technically, the weight of two is trying to pull this object back up, if I'm assuming the whole thing is falling down. The direction of motion, the velocity is downwards. Okay? And I know that's strange. Because how, much, how many times have I said, weight is always down? Well, when we do a system approach, things get a little bit screwy with the, with the direction of the forces, but the same ideas, the same principles apply. And so what I get for this is I get this formula. F net equals M1 plus M2 times the acceleration will equal weight 1 minus weight 2. All right. Now it's weight 1 minus weight 2 because M1 is greater than M2. That's, if this is the direction that the object would be moving. We always want to be uh, pointing in the direction of motion. All right. So here is my main formula. This is where I combine my two masses, and, then, and both of them have one acceleration. These are the external forces acting on the system. All right. Because the system is just the Atwood machine. What creates weight, though? That is between the system and the Earth. And the Earth is not part of my system. It's something external to the system. So that's why I don't include that. Uh, that's why I, th those two are the only two forces acting on the whole Atwood machine. So this finally leads me to this equation. If I said, please find the acceleration of this Atwood machine, we have our formula, m1 plus m2, m times a equals weight 2 minus, oh, not weight 2, sorry, weight 1 minus weight 2. Well, what does weight 1 and weight 2 equal? Well, that would be m1 plus m2 times a equals, let's plug in, how would we find the weight? That's m1 times g minus m2 times g. And then the acceleration, I divide it out, would equal m1g minus m2, m2g over m1 plus m2. This would be your acceleration. It's force. This is force. Basically, I'm rewriting this equation, force over mass. These are the forces, m1g minus m2g, divided, the net force, divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2. The only thing that would change if m2 was greater than m1, the only thing would change is this top part. Because if m2 is greater, that means weight 2 is pulling the whole system down in the direction of motion, and m1 would be pulling it upwards. So the bottom, the denominator would stay the same. I would just simply switch these two terms, m2g minus m1g. All right? So let's go ahead and try out a problem. I know I didn't talk about tension yet, but that'll come back. We'll talk about that clearly in a problem. It's easier to see there. So let's say that this side is 3 kilograms and this side is 1 kilogram. I want to find the acceleration of this Atwood machine. So what would I do? I'd go, okay, well, I'm going to ignore tensions. Tension, I'm going to use a system approach. Okay? That means F net will equal the two masses, 3 plus 1 times A, would equal, which way would this be going? The whole thing should be going up on the right, down on the left. So weight of 3, the weight of the 3 kilogram mass is in the direction of motion, that'd be positive, while weight of the 1 kilogram mass is going to be negative. So this should be, I'm going to write weight 3 minus weight 1, because I'm just writing the uh, mass that I'm referring to. And so if I write this out, go back to this color, this would be 4a equals, the, uh, oops, sorry, I'm going to do this very, very slowly, 3 times 10 minus 
1 times 10, m times g, that's all I'm doing here, making sure it's super, super clear. And so 4a equals 30 minus 10, 4a equals 20. The acceleration of this whole system is 5 meters per second squared. So how fast is the 3 kilogram mass accelerating? 5 meters per second squared downward. How fast is the 1 kilogram mass accelerating? 5 meters per second squared upwards. Okay? They both accelerate together. But now what about that second part? What about tension? What would the tension be in this? Alright, what would be the tension in, and a lot of times they try to confuse you, what's the tension in each rope? Well, what do we remember? The tensions in each rope are the same, so you only need to solve for one tension. Alright, and you decide. It doesn't matter. We should get the same answer on both, but I'll, we'll prove that. With tension, what you need to do is you only look at one side. So we don't use the system approach, not the system. You focus back on one of the two masses, all right? And as long as you feel confident, you only need to solve for it once. But we're going to, again, I'm going to show you that it's going to be equal on both. So what do I do? Let's focus on maybe the larger mass, three kilograms. So it's going down, so down is positive, okay? And so now I go back and basically look at the three kilogram mass all alone. Weight down tension up, but the whole thing is going down. Down is positive. So this would be net force equals m times a, which equals weight minus tension. And so I only do the one mass. It's three kilograms. I just found the acceleration. That's five. Will equal weight 30 minus t. I solve t equals 30 minus 15. The tension in the rope is 15 newtons. And that's it. If you feel good about it, you're good to go. If you want to double check it, let's double check. Let's use the other mass now. What's the other mass going to do? The other mass, tension up, weight down, one kilogram. This one is moving upwards. So the net force equation for this one would be MA equals T minus W. And so this would be 1 times 5 equals T minus 10. I add 10 to the other side, 5 plus 10. Hey, look at that. T equals 15 newtons. Good thing. Obviously, if they come out differently, you did something wrong. Okay? So there you go. That's how we approach any Atwood. It doesn't matter what the mass is. Hey, if you have an extra mass, add another mass onto the uh, system equation. This doesn't always have to be this way. I do have people, I do have students that memorize this equation. I don't. But obviously, I, I already know what I'm expecting, and I always go back and solve for it over and over again. So, what about a modified Atwood? Same thing. We're going to be asking for what's the acceleration and what's the tension in the rope. Those are the two things we like the most. The thing now, though, is we have one block on a surface and one block hanging. And so now, we do have to pay attention to the surface. Is it frictionless or not? You're going to have to pay attention. All right? So we actually do two setups here. We're going to do, we're going to focus on this, we're going to focus on acceleration, then we'll do a try problem. When it's frictionless and when there is friction, what do we do? Okay? Well, if it's frictionless, and I want to do the system approach. The system approach, the way I like to do it, it's, I think, the easier method to work this out. All right? Less mistakes will be made. What is moving this whole thing? If it's frictionless, I'll go ahead and draw the free body diagram up here. We have the weight pulling down. We have the tension up. We have the tension pulling right. We have weight down, and we have normal up. Okay? This whole thing should be moving to the right and then down. So right is positive, and then down is positive over on the side. All right? So the thing is, we know tension is internal, so we're going to ignore tension. Tension is not going to be involved in calculating the acceleration. We know the weight of this object will. Let me go ahead and write M1 and M2. So this is W2, W1. W2 will be one of the external forces. W2. 
Alright? It is pointing in the direction of motion, therefore it should be positive, it will accelerate. What about W1 and N? They're not pointing in the direction of motion. If forces don't point in direction of motion, we ignore. They don't contribute to, all right, forces, I'll put apostrophe up there. Forces that don't point in direction of motion, we're going to ignore. They don't help the object move that direction. A force has to be in the direction of motion. So weight and normal do nothing. So we ignore. So this is the only external force acting on the system. So what would be my equation? Net force equals sum of the masses times A equals sum of the forces. Well, this would just be uh, M1 plus M2. I would still include both of them. This whole thing is one unit times A equals weight 2. And so this would equal M1 plus M2 times A equals M2G. And so acceleration will equal M2G divided by M1 plus M2. M2G, the weight of the, uh, number of the hanging mass, is the only thing that will make this object a system move. Now what about if there's friction? Uh -huh. What about if we add that frictional force to it? Oh, I wanted to change colors there so we see it. Okay. Now I include friction. Now what are my external forces? My external forces would still be weight 2, but now frictional force is an external force pointing opposite the direction of motion. So this is going to be negative. So now I have to redo the problem. It would be, I'm going to speed this up a little bit, F net equals M1 plus M2 times A equals weight 2 minus FF. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because some people don't know what FF would equal. We like to put everything in terms of M, G, uh, and mu. Okay? Basically we're saying now there is a coefficient of friction, mu. All right? So how would I solve this? It would be M1 plus M2 times A equals M2G minus, well what's FF? All right? I'm going to take you to a new page to kind of go through that. FF. What's the formula for FF? Frictional force. It equals mu times n. Well, if I'm on a flat surface, what can, what can you tell me about n and the weight? They are equal to each other. So, frictional force in this problem, normal will equal the weight. I can plug in mu times weight, which then will equal mu mg. The frictional force on a flat surface is equal to mu mg. And so if I go back here, this would equal mu m1g, because that is, it's the, it's the uh, first mass, m1. And so finally, the acceleration of this will be m2g minus mu m1g over m1 plus m2. All right? I know it's a lot of letters, it's scary, all right? But if we can, if, if this is the idea. Identify those external forces. That's how I know what letters are going to show up. What are those external forces? And this is not so bad. Again, it is not my recommendation for you to sit here and go, modify that with acceleration equals M2G minus mu M1G over M1 plus M2. That, not many people are able to do that. All right. Don't be sitting there trying to go think back and it's what it's always going to be. Think about the process of solving this problem. All right. So, if I do a quick problem with this, all right. Let's say this is a two kilogram mass and this is a five kilogram mass. Let's go ahead and do a little more difficult one. Let's say there is a mu of 0.1. Okay. What would be the acceleration of the system and what would be the tension in the rope? Okay? So, here we go. It would be F net equals 2 plus 5 times A equals the weight of 2. I'll go and write weight 2 minus frictional force. Weight is pulling it down. Frictional force is trying to slow that process down. 
So say equals 7 times A equals uh, 50. 5 times 10 minus, I'm going to write this one out so we see it, 0.1 times 2 times 10. Mu M G. M2 G minus Mu M1 G. That's where I'm getting my numbers. So this is 50. That's uh, 5 times 10. So this equals 7a equals 50 minus 20 times 0.1 is 2, okay, is 2. And so 7a equals 48. And so a equals basically something like, you know, 6. Uh, I mean 6.9. 6.9 to 7, obviously, meters per second squared. I don't have my calculator. So something very close to that, because obviously 49 divided by 7 would be 7. Okay. So something very close to that. All right. Uh, how do we get the tension? Well, now that I know the acceleration, I will tell you most people like to use the hanging mass to find tension. You can, you can use the sliding mass. You absolutely can. There's no rule against that. But most of the time we do the hanging mass. So the tension in the rope on the hanging mass, 5 kilograms. Weight down, tension up, object is moving down, net force equals m times a, which equals weight minus t, and so this would be 5 times, I'm going to use 7, all right, from the problem, 5 times 7 equals uh, 50 minus t, and if I solve it, t will equal 15 newtons. The last setup, which we're not going to do a specific problem for, but you have some practice problems to look at too. The last setup is the one where you have objects hanging on both sides of a mass on the table. All right. So we have, we'll say, M1, M2, and M3. The whole system will move in the direction of the greater mass that's hanging. So let's say M3 is greater than M1. That means this whole thing is going up on the left, over on the right, so I'll draw arrows there, and then down, sorry, up on the left, right in the center, and down on the right. All of this would be considered positive motion. Anything pointing in the direction of motion is positive, anything in the opposite direction is negative. So obviously the question is, what are your external forces? Well, what would be acting on this system? What would be acting on it? Well, we know weight of 3 would be acting on it. And that would be positive. We have weight of 1, but that would be negative. Tension we ignore everywhere. All right. In the middle, we got weight and we got normal. They're not pointing in direction of motion, so they don't count. The only possibility would be possibly frictional force on M2. All right? And again, that is if there is a coefficient of friction. Obviously, in this case, it would be backwards, so it would be negative. It's always negative. All right? And so basically, you have two possible net force equations. If mu equals zero, meaning frictionless, F net would be M1 plus M2 plus M3. You'd have three masses all accelerating together. It would equal W3 minus W1. If mu is greater than zero, meaning there is friction, it would be the same thing initially. M1 plus M2 plus M3 times acceleration, but it would be weight 3 minus weight 1 minus the frictional force on the center object. That's where I'm going to stop. This is for you to think about. If you have questions, obviously, uh, you know, look through some of the materials and um, we'll go from there. All right. Thank you.